Are you a coder who gets rejected based on no practical experience or because others have a strong LinkedIn personal brand and you don't? Your coaching institute will hate me for doing this. But I welcome you to Code to Career 30 Days Challenge where I have chosen these 5 total strangers out of my LinkedIn contacts and have taken up the challenge to help them go from jobless or underpaid to well paid job that too without additional degrees and certifications in the next 30 days. If you are a coder and wants to get a well paid job, this is your golden chance to experience real project implementation from scratch that gets you a well paid job and builds your LinkedIn personal brand and also resume for absolutely free. So why just watch? Get into our WhatsApp community to experience this. Link is in the description. Now let's get started. Okay, I welcome you all to the second session of Code to Career Challenge Cohort 3 where we are developing a Linux project, Linux systems project and yes also to, from today only, initially I thought the embedded Linux concepts can come in the last two or somewhere in, at the fag end of the thing. But we are starting from today only and I will speak some things about it. So you will understand uh, where all it falls. And the test driven development document is the basis of today's discussion. And your understanding of the previous day where you wrote or I expect that you would have written the server and client code to just understand what it is doing. We will we'll talk a little bit about the logical part of how a server and client, they fit into this bigger concept, bigger uh, thing, scheme of things, where the server now starts having more capabilities when I attach a particular protocol to it. But the regular communication stuff should be same. And then we will transition to the test-driven development why trust driven development? What are the advantages? We just glanced and we just try to understand in the previous thing, but now we will do a deep dive in light of the project proper development, I mean the pro 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 project proper and also the embedded part. So that when you enter into that area of porting your TFTP application in onto the board of your choice, you know which are the things to be taken care and you write a test case to it and you fail fast. I'm not saying because there is test driven development that you will not fail. But you will fail fast and you will fail only at certain places which are aligned towards your objective. Random jagha pe aap fail nahi hoga, aapka failure nahi hoga that you go out of this scheme of things. Clear? So any queries now, before we go to the next, uh, the part, which is today, previous, whatever has happened, any questions there, so we will resolve. Then I will speak a little bit about that server structure, the template, why certain calls come in order, and then we will get into the test driven development. So any questions, please unmute and just ask. No questions. No questions indicate two things. Either you understood everything, you did the complete action and everything was successful or you did not do the action. <coughs> yeah, Ananda. Yeah, actually, uh, I mean, today uh, we have, I mean, I have started the uh, basic networking and UDP communication. So the concept I had studied and it to, I mean, um, the coding parting has uh, completed. I wrote the code in code blocks. So those mm -hmm. client and server part. So I need to write some applications code upon that. So um, I need to do that. So then I think I can get some points to discuss. Okay, there, there isn't any application as such. You you send something from the server and it gets echoed at the client, vice versa. So you send a string and it, it gets transferred there <coughs> and it will be done. Yeah. 
So you don't have to think of an application. The application, which is the TFTP itself, is the project. You will get to it. Yeah. Sure, sure. Okay. <clears throat> Can we do any CR? Now, what is this CRUD? I heard, but I don't, I'm not well, so much aware of it. Bonish. Can you unmute and ask? If you want to work with me personally, where I guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job, book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Link is in the description. Here you are. I think you will be. Okay, can't remove... Create, re <laughs> create, remove, delete tasks. Okay. If you have some information on that, we can do it. I need to have some more information to really understand uh, Bhuvanesh. Yeah. Help me with some information, then we can really see if it fits your requirement and do the thing. Error checking in East. <coughs> I am in university. Yeah, yeah, please send uh, offline. You put it in the group. I understand. Error checking in each stage. UDP code needs more clarity. Okay, Shankar is asking. Fine. Think, think of a very simple transaction having occurring between two people. Where the one person has is one person is a service provider and the other person just goes and requests that service. Like I am trying, I have some, uh, today morning we had some issue with <laughs> some taps leakage in our house and we booked a thing and that person go, who came and he provided the service and pro he, prov he provided the service and we paid for it. The point here is he has that service. We queried or we asked that particular person, do you provide this service? And he responded back saying that I can provide this service. Now, why am I stressing this part is when we enter into the service oriented architecture also, it is all the capabilities of entities which can provide service that the other entities can ask. Think of it as a, here the terminology like server, client and all those things. Actually, there are, uh, there was some discussion some, some time back saying that, okay, Client means uh, like master slave. They are like demeaning people and all those things. <laughs> so, lot of connect, lot of things happen with the terminology also. But we will stick to this terminology because most predominant, mostly all the literature talks about this server and client. The common parts of server and client is that you have to first have the entry or exit point, which is the socket. So in both places, you create the socket. Once the socket has been created, the obvious terminal stage would be to close the socket. Between these things, the type of system calls, that are the type of calls that are uh, called or created or whatsoever you call differentiates a server code from a client code. So if, if, if you have implemented the code, I just want to understand from your side, what are the calls that you saw to be present in server but not in client. Anyone went into the code and tried to understand what are those unique calls that make a server a server and a client a client? <coughs> you have gone through the code? Yes. So what, what are the calls that differentiated you as per you, between a client and server. See, you wrote the code, you executed. Yes, I understand. But what did you notice in the code? So think of the server like this. A shopkeeper opening the shutter and waiting for the customer to arrive so that he can provide a service. 
the onus is not on the shopkeeper to run into the street and say that, please come to my shop. <laughs> Whoever has certain requirement because of the kind of service that shopkeeper is providing, a client will come in or a customer will come in, do the transaction. Common observance, common observing. Now, when the person comes, first I need to tell that my shop is at floor, fourth floor, the second shop or something. Some address is there. So the server should, if you want to work with me personally, where I guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job, book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Link is in the description. Let client know that this is the port. So how does it know? Or not, or how does it know? How does it tell? It tells this is the port number and this is my IP address. So that in the whole of the network, if the client has to reach to the server, it will reach through its IP address. So the, once the server creates the socket, it binds the IP address and also the port number. Once it is done, it's then this is the bind call. You have seen the bind call. This is the binding of the port number and the IP address. Then it stays in a while one loop accepting connections. So the client comes, accept connection. <laughs> Typically what happens is server forks another thing. That's the reason why I, I beginning I told, please go ahead, go with that B's guide IPC. So the server now forks and creates a replica or replica of that socket. So that one socket always stays in the accepting mode and the other socket now starts creating a session with the client that requested the information. So send, receive happens. Once the communication is done, both reach a stage wherein they say that, yes, I got what you want to give. Yes, I gave what you want, what you wanted. So let us close the connection and they tear down the connection. Clear? Yes. That speed setting also like <laughs> uh, mainly at what say, speed uh, that he will transmit. Like if I am a client and you are a server or like I am talking in some speed. So you have to also have the same capability. Otherwise, it will be like uh, somewhere like this and that. No, it will not match also. Correct. So that is also one important criteria that I felt. Yeah, it is. It is right. It, it is an important consideration to be done. And this is where I want you people also to understand the beauty of the layered architecture. I don't want to load or I don't want to enhance or trouble the socket with dealing with this kind of baud rates and all those things. Are you getting the point? I tell this is the headache of the physical layer or at the max, the Mac layer. Why should a protocol which is at a higher layer should really worry about what is the baud rate? This is called separation of concerns. Yeah. Is, is this point clear to everyone? The separation of concerns. This is super important. <laughs> That's when you that that is why when you start when you start implementing, you will not step on to the other zone, which is actually an action, which is actually a thing that can be done by the or that will be done by the lower layers. You do what you do, and you provide a neat interface for other people to talk with you. Clear? Yes. Now, why test-driven development? For that, the best way is to, for me to actually show the PPT only. Let me start from the beginning. Yes. If you want to work with me personally where i guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job book a one-on-one -on -one call with me link is in the description <laughs> so it's a pure system programming kind of stuff but yes we all come from that embedded embedded stuff so I want to, from the beginning, first session or second session itself, 
talk more which is oriented not as a pure systems kind of programming but having also a bearing on embedded systems yeah so we'll today we will understand what is test driven development which is a software development approach where tests are written, written before the code why that is we will understand which is saying that ensures code functionality and quality from the start which it will ensure that we get all those things the cycle of writing the test case and executing without the code where the test case fails then incrementally i go and write the smallest amount of code that will satisfy the requirement so that the test case becomes green and then there again i also see whether out of ignorance or to un out, out of ignorance or lack of information did i end up writing lot of code if so to refactor this is the cycle that keeps on going in test driven development it's it's a it's a methodology or an approach which i felt is suitable for any kind of code development when initially test driven development one and these kind of things came they were not so much i would not say welcomed or something but they are not so prevalent in areas like embedded systems methodologies like agile and all those things which are highly oriented towards cloud kind of development and application development are also not so much now they are becoming prevalent in the embedded area also but at the point of time when these things got introduced they are not ready made or they are not so much accepted by the embedded community now the things have changed people understand the importance of it <laughs> so we will understand that the importance of tdd in embedded systems it addresses unique challenges which is resource constraints and need for reliability this is where i felt when i read this particular line thinking about an embedded system which is a resource constrained environment and also the amount of importance we attach to reliability you need to understand this point very clearly i have a requirement i am writing the minimum or the least possible amount of code that will satisfy the requirement if that requirement satisfaction means that i have to hard code certain variables or certain values which are not going to change for example let us say in in my code i have certain uh, interfaces to my device through which i can communicate and once i manufacture my device it says that through the life of this life span of that device there are only three interfaces why would then i go to a complex operation like a malloc wherein i i malloc certain memory and and i create a structure for that interface rather i would go for an array of size 3 and i hard code maybe the values are not populated that value updation can be dynamic <coughs> imagine now there is no test driven development the requirement has come the person who is developing can choose as per his or her need to go in a way that okay i will create memory dynamically i will use something like linked list the thing can go anywhere but when i impose like test driven development and i say that write that minimal amount of code which will solve this problem and then for embedded system i attach this extra dimension that okay ensure that you are not consuming more resources and also easy to maintain that's what is the second thing the third thing if you are able to see malloc then there has to be a free somewhere right but statically i am creating an array which is anyways going to stay forever if not tomorrow 
If not today, tomorrow somebody will use one of the interfaces because of which one array element will get populated. Until that time, I know. But I know at the beginning only when the system boots up, this is the amount of memory I have rationed for interfaces and it is going to stay forever. Are you people understanding the way how a methodology called, test, called as test-driven development is modified or made to fit for constrained environment like embedded systems? Less bugs, easier maintenance, and ultimately improves code quality and documentation. Last time also I mentioned that code documentation is very easily possible because the test cases and the features go hand in hand or rather the test cases and the code go hand in hand. Applying that, yeah, okay, this TFTP, we can <coughs> ignore this. Now applying that to our TFTP protocol. Here I want you to think like my TFTP protocol implementation proper might be a bit away from the socket kind of programming, but they actually overlap. What I am trying to say is the server has to do a particular activity or the server has to provide a certain kind of service to the client. In the initial stage, when the initial first handout has given to you, it was using UDP only, but I did not impose any kind of specific service to that server. The moment I spell out a very specific service to the server saying that this is, for example, there are many shops. I say that this is garment shop, this is medical shop, this is groceries. They have their own unique personality. The way the internal decoration would be done, the, the internal placement of various things, they change. Now, when I say that this is a server, but this is a TFTP server, the, the personality of that server changes now. Which, which means that it does a specific activity, but the basic functionality with respect to starting the server, handling connections, they are common. So we start writing our test cases saying that what would be the first kind of test cases I would handle, which is, did I first able to start the server Am I able to handle connections that are coming or the requests that are coming from clients? And then I graduate to the file transfer functions, which is the TFTP proper that I have this much file. I am breaking it to, into this, uh, these many pieces. I am sending it. There is a write read request from someone or there is a write request. And then byte by byte I am sending and I am getting acknowledgement. If you want to work with me personally, where I guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job, book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Link is in the description. If you see, by virtue of what kind of test cases I have to write, when I know my problem, I'm not even making any mistake in, in, in the term, in, in the area of writing the test cases in a hierarchical way which means on one side my test cases are slowly evolving maybe one feature second third feature fourth feature on the other side my code is also evolving and they are always in sync that at any point of time i do an incremental development and i see that something has broken i have i will anyways maintain the copy but the quickness with which I understand that something is broken will be now very fast because I can automate the test cases if I go for automation. And it, and it is still controlled now. I know that yaha tak mera test cases hai. till now there are my test cases. If my test cases are there, I don't expect the code to be beyond that. Unless and until the test case is not coming into existence, I will not have a scenario where the code is also coming into existence. No code, no error.
the more the more you write the code the probability of more number of errors is actually existing there is a book called as code simplicity there is a soft copy of that also if you are interested and when i was actually very much down so much down in my life that i thought software engineer ka zindagi hi kuch nahi hai there is no existence of software engineer but when i read that book i felt that oh because i am existing the world is existing kind of shift it happened and there <coughs> the author says we software engineers be it embedded or anyone we need to be really good with taming our taming the complexity the more bigger task you want to do the more will be the code and the more complex things start happening with the code now with kind with these kind of things you can handle tomorrow tftp there is another code another uh, sim, uh, uh, not so complex and not so easy network file system so anything that you want to now develop you have a very well established process you do it once rinse and repeat with this only subconsciously it enters into your mind and you will adopt the same thing for any complex activity you do with software in future but until that time you need to have a little bit of patience in terms of writing those things <coughs> now the embedded linux stuff what i told as of now is that as uh, as of now what we told is that okay it it can be applied to even a desktop environment or a cloud environment and all those things let us now see how it relates to embedded linux which is our area of interest when i am writing certain piece of code like i wrote a test case and for the test case i want to write a piece of code now i understand that acha to write this piece of code i want to have this particular api which is a low level api which has to be called and now this particular low level api i don't have to write because i am understand we are talking about an environment where certain libraries are already created for us then i go and pick up that library and i add it to my root file system again resource constraint less bugs if something is not working and i know that my code has come afresh along with my code i brought in another library the the area of control for me to debug and do is within my hand or not so vast ek hi library ya do library i have added and some code i have written previous i have certain number of test cases which will automatically ensure that till point x1 the things are fine from x1 i added delta x and i reached to x2 something is not working <coughs> so libraries resource uses optimizes the performance and ensures compatibility this is very important one one library what i'm trying to say is most of the code that we encounter in this kind of open source stuff and all those things they very rapidly change and here for people who are interested there is one uh, book called uh, the cathedral and the bazaar it's a very very good book you you will really appreciate what it takes or how is that so loosely coupled and geographically distributed developers are able to create magic that companies which pump in so many millions of dollars are not able to. if you want to work with me personally where i guarantee to work with you until you secure a well paid job book a one on one call with me link is in the description you all know linux right definitely most stupid question i am asking but uh, but the linux developers are not restricted to one organization they are spread all over the world but you see the the perfection or the or the level of quality with which a linux kernel gets released 
So to understand these things, you, you have to definitely read this book called the Cathedral and Bazaar. And it's by somebody called Eric Simons, Eric Simon or somebody. But very good. What the reason why I'm why this conversation has come is because it's ensuring of compatibility. Some developer somewhere, group of people decides that we need to remove this particular API from this source code, which is coming as a library into like which you are using it as a library. It is not in your control, right? You need certain functionality, you took up a library. But that group of people who are developing that code decided that some API is now no more valid and they replace it with some other API. But your application is old API. Ka kal kal rahe na. Then it will break. So this incremental thing also ensures that your compatibility is intact. Having said that, I am only talking about the scenario where I am taking a snapshot in time. From time T1 to T2, I am talking about it. Beyond T2, something can happen. But your application is done within the time limit of T1 and T2 and that library is already there. That code is already there and your application is working fine. At this point of time, I want to pause and ask people whether these things are sitting in your mind. Any question, please ask. Okay. Hmm. Everything is going good, Vamsi. Yeah, we are listening to you. Yeah, but that it shouldn't be overhead transmission, right? Because no, for, no, no, for, for, for what people, I'm saying is good. Like, for yeah. new people, Linux and the environment and all those things are new. <clears throat> and the, the, these are all slowly aligning towards a bit more complex stuff. So I, I want to ensure that the basics are really sorted out so that at the end, people don't give up. Okay, then let us go. Yes. Now, what are the challenges? And this is also very specific to the embedded Linux stuff only. <laughs> we'll be you will be getting a handout where the more specific details will be given minus the hardware. I am I'm, I'm reiterating the fact that there is no compulsion or I'm not I'm not mandating any hardware thing as an embedded Linux part. I'm only talking about what are the activities you need to do so that this particular application can be ported onto a embedded platform. Which is that platform? It's your choice. So, but the challenges that you may get when you are trying to do these things is definitely hardware compatibility and driver support. <laughs> Why driver support? You have TFTP and you have UDP. But then the physical layer is Ethernet. Could be Bluetooth. Could be your recollect the things that I told in the first session. Throw away all, throw away even the UDP stuff because you are not implementing UDP. You are only making use of UDP as a vehicle to transport. Going by the terminology that it is called transport protocol. Now your transport can be a very trivial thing like UART, SPI, I2C or your custom two-wire protocol, whatever it is. But you need to ensure that the driver support is there. Why? When the things are all set and you turn the switch and you don't see the bulb glowing, where do you think is the problem? Current hi chala gaya? I don't know. Somewhere cut in the wire? Fuse chala gaya? There it will be very, very tough. To overcome these problems only, we get into the test-driven development and we go to the incremental things. Nevertheless, these challenges are still will be there when you get into embedded Linux and you take one hardware is because you still operate with certain amount of code or the variables which are unknown to you. Then you need to jump into the forums and ask these people that people do this and all those things. 
ensuring that your code is proper. <laughs> so the simplest thing that I was telling, even from go to career challenge one is fake the hardware. Now, what is faking the hardware? If you see any network device or any other device, the first entry point of any information is through some interface, which will trigger an interrupt. Network, network interface or network chip, whatever it is. So this, to, to some location you are writing and somebody is picking up, you write into some location and the driver picks up and sends it outside. So eliminate this bulk of the code and you put a file there. You write into my, you write into out.txt and you read from in.txt. So now what happens? And you define the information. Send a character, send some number, send some hex value, doesn't matter. But fake the hardware so that at any point of time with some macros, you say enable driver. The flag is true then your driver code comes into existence. If def enable driver, you have the driver code. Else if you have your file writing and file reading operation and if. Making sense? It is only now, it is actually now flipping the switch with that macros and your code works. And this is where I, the second point is exactly the same thing I told, but in a different format. TDD facilitates porting continuous testing against target specifics. Now what is happening? If def driver enable is true, what is there inside the driver could be anything now. Now it is Ethernet, you replace it with Wi-Fi, still it will work. I mean still it will work in the sense what I am trying to say. You are information till that point has been already tested. You added the driver code, things going out of order, then again run your automation and ensure that, oh, okay, till that point, my information is coming. Is this sitting in your head properly? The thing that I told, using macros that you delete some piece of code or any, I mean, disable some piece of code and enable some piece of code. The best part for doing this thing, you don't need any hardware. On your desktop also, you can do because it is ultimately a file operation, reading into a file and writing into a file or reading from and writing into. <coughs> yeah, I, I thought I, the reason why I brought about IoT device network is remember the use case, firmware update. We are using TFTP as a mechanism to write a binary file into certain memory location. So the firmware update, over the over the air firmware update, something are saying, people are saying a lot of things, like over the air update and all those things very much useful in IoT device network. I am just trying to expand the scope of your code, your implementation and the use case of firmware update relating it to a domain like IoT. It can be vehicle telematics also, anything of your choice. Iterative testing, I already told. Recollect that thing that where you enable macro, disable macro, run your test, test cases multiple number of times, you always have it. When your application is growing and growing, you still have a check to say that till now the test cases are written, this is the code and I will reiterate. The last thing is my favorite. Start small focus on critical functionalities first. That is why if you recollect when we started about the server and then the persona of the server being a TFTP server, I told first test whether the server is able to send and receive information, whether it is able to accept connections. 
then you bring the TFTP parts of read request, write request, error, functionality, and all those things. Yes. Any questions? Let's go through the questions. If you want to work with me personally, where I guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job, book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Link is in the description. Your environment, is your environment ready? Are you able to do the stuff? Anyone has any concern with respect to, this is the first time that I am looking at such a big amount of code. This is the first time that I am encountering something that I will be doing in an environment which is Unix kind of environment, Linux. Any concerns of that kind if they are stopping you, if they are bothering you, raise it here and get it sorted. Because the next document would be about project requirements. It would be theoretical only, we will be brainstorming. But from the next thing, you have five documents purely C code. As I told, they are, it is like a template kind of TFTP server. It works actually. But I, I really want you to think, read the code and understand and try to do all by yourself. Code explanation, I, code explanation I will do. But then it's like stuffing your wardrobe with a lot of clothes. And then you are working from home and you are roaming in, around in your house in Bermudas only. But you have all that good clothes in your wardrobe. What's the use? So wherever you are stuck, please go ahead and ask. Hello. Yeah, Harsha. Sir, uh... So the code that we got right for UDP server and client. Mm. So uh, in this a, a client and server communicating on my system only. Uh, using loopback that IP address they are communicating. Yeah, one twenty seven zero dot zero dot uh, yeah. one. Yeah. So when you say that Ethernet or Bluetooth that abstraction, that I'm not understanding sir from that level. Okay. Even at a higher level, you can if you can explain. Yeah, I, I understand your part. For that, maybe not tomorrow, but Sunday I would be sharing one more extra document with you which will talk, which will explain actually what is inside a socket. Because at, at, at people always think that, okay, what, who is that socket implemented? Actually, uske andar kya hota hai? Then you will understand that the, the socket when it gets created, the question that you, are, you have asked, Harsha, Bringing again back to your seven layer architecture or five layer architecture, your TFTP understands that this is the file that I have. User has given a.txt. <clears throat> now I start reading byte by byte. I do file operations, LC and all those things and I get to the file. I break it into bytes and I give it, I put that into the UDP packet as a payload. Now that goes one more layer down. Uh, my TFTP is here. My UDP is here. Typically, if you see, if I, if you want to consider an Ethernet, then that UDP packet actually becomes a payload in the IP packet. That's why it is called TCP IP, right? So the IP is always there. Now that IP packet will go and sit in the Ethernet packet. So as you come down the layers, the headers and, tra and tra trailers get sandwiched, I mean, sorry, get attached. Now, when, now the Ethernet frame format has enough intelligence as to how it has to be transmitted. And that's where you get into the electrical specifications of the physical layer, which we even don't have to bother. Some people will do it in silicon. Like for example, when you want to do an I2C operation, forget about any layers or think of any maximum layers you are coming through on top 20 layers, 30 layers, different function flows I am saying. 
application did user click the button, then it gave something, 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 something. But wo setting ka value to it, it starts trickling down, right? And finally, it falls down to some, some area at the driver level. What is that you are going to do? User data you pick up and you put it in I2C data register. That's it. Yeah. So the Ethernet packet, once it gets created, the the Ethernet physical thing, whatever is that protocol defines. If you want to work with me personally, where I guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job, book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Link is in the description. The electrical nature is already defined. You go, if you were to be Imagine like this, if you are, if you are sitting on one bit or if you are, if you have a travel, if you can travel side by side along with the bits that are going on a wire, you will actually see that it is all one zero one zero one zero only. You will not make any head or tail out of it. The collection of certain bits now reach there. Then I give a meaning saying that, oh, Ethernet packet is some, it, it has some, I think, 1276 or 1536, some byte size is there. It Maximum size of Ethernet packet. I say that these many bytes represent these things. Now, for that, I have even more understanding. This is the start of the frame. This is the checksum. So, I, I do all that calculation and I say that this complete collection of bits, ideally collection of bits, is Ethernet frame. There I now start interpreting. Oh, the first three bytes are this, then the next two bytes are that, and all those things. Then one layer will consume its header. It will say that, okay, sahi salamat agaya packet. Then the payload is given to the top layer. Then it does its operation on the extra bits, its particular header and tailor. <coughs> now, this is how you have seen in the textbooks. How many of you remember if you have picked up your computer networks or whatever, they say that this is a sender, this is the receiver, there will be five layers here, five layers here, and there will be a dotted line that fifth layer is talking to the fifth layer, third layer is talking to the third layer. It, 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 it looks as if the third layer is talking with the third layer, but actually that data goes down, flows, comes up, the attachment that have that are happening that happened here from the sender are actually understood at the receiver at layer three. Now you understood. <coughs> Hello. Ah oh, yes, yes, sir. yes, sir. I got the uh, abstracted idea of what you are doing. No, no, this is not abstract idea. That yeah, yeah, the seven uh, layer and five layer is an abstract understanding, but this is what happens actually. Yeah. And I come to that level, that point where you are taming the complexity. So my one question is: so you said, no, sir, uh, TFTP, UDP, IP, uh, Ethernet. So my question is: where does our abstraction, like, where is our implementation, and where does the abstraction take over, or where where the headers completely take over? No, no, there is no abstraction here. It's, it's, it's real code that you are writing. You are writing yes, the yes. TFTP code. Uh -huh. <laughs> that is where I told when embedded Linux, when, we, when I was telling about embedded Linux, you write the TFTP code. Because you are using Linux, the UDP implementation is already there in the kernel. The IP implementation is already there in the kernel. The kernel already has a Ethernet driver. <laughs> So you are writing only TFTP yes. and using TFTP, what is that you are sending data is the binary file or the firmware file. The use case now where you are, you are employing TFTP is to send a firmware file from your sender to receiver and I give it a name called as firmware update. Making sense? There is no yes. abstraction here. It's all concrete. And again, to to again reiterate this fact in a different way, 
if you are thinking about linux is all udp is done for you ip is done for you ethernet driver driver is done for you or bluetooth or whatever remove all these things implement only tftp protocol on a bare metal device as a bare metal programming send it over txrx still it works getting the point yeah when when these many layers are coming you are actually adding lot of complexity yeah so there is there is any thing abstraction here in fact i am saying move away from abstraction of these seven layers and five layers and understand that concrete in the concrete if you are thinking about, about the things in a very concrete level this is what happening yeah so any other <laughs> for that we have to know electrical specifications more yeah if you want to get into that area if you are seeing a career in that area bhuvanesh yes you can go there because new protocols come you usb 2.0 came usb 3.0 came when new new domains get open up new way, new places where things are happening the new protocols have to come up then electrical specifications have they say right in in apple what is that called thunderbolt yeah there, there's a specification called thunderbolt and now you have uh, usb has uh, male female and all those kind of things usb a type b type but then you have this kind of uh, these kind of things <coughs> it it does not have any any kind of uh, a type b type and all those things so bonus to for you for your question the simplest answer is that's an area that you can explore very much but you get into that area of pure electrical nature and vlsi maybe that kind of stuff and these are all very niche areas if you really go deep and deep into it yes any other question hello yeah harsha yeah so uh, what question is in this udp implementation that we did we passed strings no sir uh, string messages we passed mm -hmm. uh, the question is uh, so when we do tftp we have to integrate it with udp means we have to use udp to uh, like uh, inti like attach those two to send the data my question is what is the next thing that we can do or the changes to the present program that will be useful for uh, to deal with tftp also no no now there is no tftp okay <laughs> let me tell one more let me tell one more time See, you have a gift okay you you have you were you purchased a mobile frame mobile phone because you know that your friend is so fond of photography and you purchased that mobile phone which has very good camera now you put it in a box understand that this camera is like your tftp packet i'm i'm not getting into the details of the protocol structure of tftp i'm calling it as a whole tftp packet now i am putting it into a box which is called udp getting the point now the box can be made of rubber the box can be made of plastic cardboard iron anything right so further to understand if you see when you are creating the socket you say af inet and datagram <laughs> the moment you tell a socket that i am i am asking you to behave like that you are telling it that use the udp kind of packet creation harsha and for others making sense when i am creating a socket i am telling how the socket has to behave by saying that you are from inet family af inet but you are datagram packet which means you don't have all the fields you don't have all the acknowledgement privileges just asynchronously fire and forget but the moment i say no no you are not uh, datagram you are stream then i am imposing the socket to behave and work as per the specification of tcp
And to understand what I am saying, how many of you are mm -hmm. aware of Wireshark? Heard about Wireshark? Yes, sir. <laughs> how many of you are aware of Wireshark? Okay, Leela Prasad says yes. Yes. Okay, Anil. Catch, do the packet capture and see. You will see at all layers what is happening. Because it, it breaks down protocol by protocol and it gives the every field of the protocol, right? And at the end, you will see that, oh, it's only the bits and bytes. Arsha, let this thought sink in. Because at, at one point of time, I, I did, I, I had such a very... If you want to work with me personally, where I guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job, book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Link is in the description. It's tough time to understand that a port signifies one application. To understand this one statement, I struggled so much. I, I, I created casuals in my mind. I was doing like this, that, that, so much of what is happening in your mind? Then, three days ke baad aisa, mujhe samajh mein aaya ki acha is port ka matlab application hota hai. I thoroughly enjoyed it because I deduced I deduced the whole understanding by myself. But exactly after one day, I understood that if I would have asked my team lead, I would have saved three days. Ki bhai akhir port kya hota hai? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. See your mobile phone, the make of it, the kind of it, whatever it is, name it as TFTP packet. I'm not talking about specifications. I'm not talking about the color, anything. But it's a TFTP packet. But I have to give it to my friend who is in another city. So I have to package it somewhere, somehow. So I put it in a box and that is my UDP packet. UDP ki packet ke under jo payload hota hai, wo mera TFTP packet ho jata hai. So one, the actual payload by application gets into another thing that becomes a big packet. That itself goes into another thing that's a big packet. So at the end, you will have a very big packet. That very big packet goes outside Somebody collects it, they will remove all the things like when you when your friend receives the gift, he will take the phone and he will discard the box. Yes. So the layer about UDP, which is the TFTP, will take the packet and it will discard the UDP header and all those things and just take the TFTP. Uske baad us, us TFTP ka protocol ka to ek structure hota hai. That anyways your friend understands. Like how your friend understands when he gets a phone and operate and do all the stuff, the TFTP protocol knows what to do with that packet. So this is where I told again the separation of concerns. So in, in this layered architecture, the top layers assume that the bottom layers will do the job reliably. The trust factor will be very high. Like your trust factor of saying that if I put all this cushioning inside this box and put my cell phone, it is intact. So you put a lot of trust at the layers <coughs> below. And I am calling it as a trust, but you will see that in literature, you will say that the top level layers depend on the services of the lower level layers. This is a common term that you will hear. But for me, I feel as if you could trust karna hai, niche ka layers. It's like the CEO saying that, okay, boss, you will do the work, I know. Yeah. Example, you have explained it, but you have an example. If I want to give an example, then it happens that you have to post a letter. Okay. So you just write the letter, ठीक है अब आपने वो किस ज़बान में लिखा है इसका इस चीज़ से कोई तालुक नहीं है कि आपने वो कहाँ भेजना है तो you divide this ठीक है आपने लिख लिया आपने उसको mailbox में रखा अब 
लेट से आपके घर से कोई पिकअप करने आ रहा है तो एक बंदा बाइक पे आ रहा है पिकअप करने सो यू कैन थिंक ऑफ एज अडीपी लेयर के ये बाइक पे मेरे से पिकअप करने आ रहा है फिर वो किसी एक ऐसी जगह पे कलेक्ट हो रहे होंगे जहां पे सारे शहर के लेटर्स कलेक्ट हो रहे होंगे तो ये एक ओल्ड लेयर आ गई फिर सारे शहर के लेटर्स जा रहे होंगे किसी जहाज में किसी मेन एरिया से पोर्ट पे जा रहे होंगे एयरपोर्ट पे जा रहे होंगे उधर सारे डिस्ट्रिक्ट के लेटर इकट्ठे हो रहे होंगे वो एक ओल्ड लेयर हो गई अब अगेन वो जहाज किसी और शहर जाएगा अब यही सारा प्रोसीजर दोबारा अनपैक होगा तो दैट्स हाउ द लेयर्स आर यू नो एक तरफ से आप बनाते जाते हैं और फिर दूसरी तरफ से आप एग्जिट करते जाते हैं yes yeah so the, the little bit of history was when the whole telecommunication infrastructure came into existence the voice from a single phone going to an exchange and then getting distributed people have replicated this telecommunication structure into software and that's why you have this name also called like socket but the socket is like a plug and all those things right so the terminology also came like that <coughs> great yeah thanks for this addition uh, mashud any other questions else we can conclude the call put in action that's the only thing the ultimate needle moving stuff is action sunne ke liye to sab kuch acha lagta hai ah okay yeah you will bask in the knowledge you will have that feel good factor and all those things yeah yeah bonus yes i will share the i will share you the recording <clears throat> and in the age of swiggy and zomatos and just one click and you have the photos we want quick results but i'm i want i i hate to be the messenger of bad news but it does not work like that no no see <coughs> shankar the recording for bhuvanesh is because he is in class but otherwise all these recording will go go for a process and then in the next week as you have seen the message we will start a virtual challenge for people who are not part of this yeah they will be there so you can watch it any point of time but actually it will be premiered so any other question clarify the doubts otherwise my manager in once used to say that if you want to work with me personally where i guarantee to work with you until you secure a well paid job book a one on one call with me link is in the description don't sit on a bug the bug will not give children so quickly solve the bug and push it out don't sit on bugs and doubts So round robin, <coughs> Shankar, any doubt? Can unmute and say or type. I think Omsi, like when we start working on it, we'll understand still more better actually. Yes, that is true. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, if unless you don't touch the pan, you don't know how hot it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Shankar, any doubt? Any questions? So this test driven development you are talking about in that embedded system. Hmm. If we simply to put together, I can say that the code size will be reduced. The main importance can be that correct if you follow the test driven development in a single nutshell, if one can say. Possible, <laughs> but need not be always. See. if you are following test driven development doesn't mean that the code size will always be less because a single code base can support multiple platforms or multiple products so, so code size will always be more you will not you may not you will not be ending up writing dead code or unwanted code code yeah, yeah. so it it ensures that's what i'm saying right just go and read that code simplicity you will understand that the bugs come in software only because of the complexity and i learned it the hard way that a developer should never blame tester hardware a developer should blame only himself or herself for a bug because most of the cases yes the issue will be in the code only 
Yeah. Great. So, Kazi, any questions from your side? Okay. No. Yeah. Yes. Swaminathan. Uh, no, sir. Great. Anand. Uh, no, sir. No. Yeah. Harsha. Sorry, I missed you. Yeah, any any question? Uh, no, sir. I got the idea. Thank okay. You. Yeah, Leela Prasad. Chabarish. Yeah, Chabarish. No, I don't know. I, I could not hear. Maybe they did type. Okay. Okay, Bhuvanesh, I understand. Anirudh, Chandrika. No, sir. Yeah. Just today only I implemented a server and a client code. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow I'll be implementing uh, in a different way. I'll try to implement. Sure, sure, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Chandrika, any questions from your side? Uh, not now, Vamsi. I'm also implementing server and client code. And mm -hmm. Maybe I'll ask you. Sure, yeah, please. Yes. Nehal? No, so I'm actually trying to understand. Yeah, start engaging more because uh, initially I, I understand I, I saw your messages. So, huh. so that's why I'm taking things a bit slow and uh, I'm reiterating certain stuff, uh, certain kind of things multiple number of times because those are the key things to know. Yeah? Please. Okay, then. So... Sir? Yes. Hello. Yeah. Sir, is that mandatory to learn man pages, sir? Man pages, if you know man pages more, you will have, do the interview in a better way and you will earn more money. Yeah. Okay. Sir. Yeah. Man pages yes. will make you a true man. Okay. So. Okay. Sir. Can I have people in gallery mode? Please be on camera. I um, would like to take a snap. See, alternate days, 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. Put it in your mind that you should be dressed well for the photograph. Anand, Sabarish, Nehal. Shabrish, Bhuvanesh. Okay. One, two, three. Please, uh, please update the Excel sheet if you are not updated with your uh, name, email and phone number because it, <laughs> and also with your LinkedIn ID so that I would like to tag you, you with the photo so that it, it reaches to more people. More people understand that you are doing something with your career and then opportunities also come. That's what I'm told. I told learning is fine, but return on investment is very, very important. And definitely, yeah, I want to return back that 1300 back to you. So you need to do that action. You need to put the post and all those things. Yeah. If there are no questions, then I wish you all a great weekend. The bonus sessions will be starting from the next uh, week. Saturdays, you, you may have to put one hour so that the first session is going to be about adaptive autos or, or Linux thing. I'm in conversation with those both people. Whoever says yes, that will be the session. Yeah. Okay, then. Bye.